In today's lesson, we're going to be reviewing how to factor a difference of two squares. The important thing when you're factoring a difference of two squares is recognizing that you have a difference of two squares. So I first want to review when we multiply binomials, okay, what do you notice about these two binomials, x minus 3 times x plus 3? Well, I've got essentially the same first term, right? And then in the, the second term of the binomial are opposites, right? So let's FOIL this. x times x is x squared. x times, and I did this like this, right? x times positive 3 is positive 3x. Inside terms, x times negative 3 is negative 3x. And then last terms are negative 3 times 3 is negative 9. So when I simplify this, what ends up happening? Well, my middle two terms are the opposites of each other, right? So positive 3x and negative 3x, those cancel out, and I'm left with x squared minus 9. I'm left with this right here. Let's go ahead and FOIL this next example right here. When we FOIL this next example, I'm going to do 2x times 2x, that's 4x squared. The outside terms, 2x times 5 is 10x. The inside terms are negative 5 times 2x, which is negative 10x. And then the last terms are negative 5 times 5, which is negative 25. So when I simplify this, what am I left with? Well, those middle two terms, again, are the same but opposite, right? So 10x and negative 10x, those cancel out, and I'm left with this right here. Well, in today's lesson, we're going to be doing the reverse of this. When we see x squared minus 9, we have two perfect squares. I can factor it like this. Okay, so we have to recognize our perfect squares. Now remember, um, your perfect squares are like the, if I square x, I get x squared, right? If I square one, I get one. If I square two, I get four. If I square three, I get nine, right? If I square it, one squared is one, two squared is four. So those, these are my perfect squares, right, over here. Let me erase that. So uh, it's kind of just a lot of stuff over there. All right, so the general rule or the rule when factoring a difference of two squares, right? I've only got two terms. A difference of two squares, a squared minus b squared, which means this is a perfect square, this is a perfect square, this is a difference. It's subtraction. It's going to factor a plus b times a minus b. So let's walk through these examples. In example number one, y squared minus 36. I notice y is a perfect square, or y squared is a perfect square. It's y squared. I know 36 is a perfect square. It's 6 squared. There's my difference. So I take those, right? The y is essentially the a, and the 6 is essentially the b. So I know my factors are going to be y plus 6 times y minus 6. Let's move on to the next example. So again, it's just, you're only going to have two terms, you're going to have subtraction, you're going to have, um, you know, variables that are raised to an even power, okay? So in this example number two, 9x squared minus 49. So I actually have a coefficient in this first term. So what am I looking for? I'm looking for subtraction, check. Okay, I've only got two terms, check. Everything is a perfect square. Well, 9x squared, that's 3x squared. 49 is just 7 squared. It's like taking the square root of both of those terms. So when I factor this, 3x plus 7 times 3x minus 7, and I have students go, well, can I write 3x minus 7 times 3x plus 7? Well, can you? Is 3 times 4 the same thing as 4 times 3? It is. So you can write, if you wanted to write 3x minus 7 times 3x plus 7, you could. It's totally fine. Let's move on to the next example, a squared plus 81. Okay, I've got two perfect squares here, but what's wrong? That is not a difference. This is not a difference of squares, right? That is not subtraction. You cannot factor this this way, and this strips people up all the time. It must be subtraction. I actually can't factor this any more than it is, which means it's prime. It's already factored the most it can be factored. So let's move on to example number four. 
I have two terms. I have subtraction. Every single thing, every single number and variable is a perfect square. So in this first one, that's 10x squared. In the next term, there's minus, that's y squared. So when I factor this, I take that, let's call that a, let's call that b, a plus b times a minus b. So I'm gonna get 10x plus y times 10x minus y. So let's move on to some mi mixed practice factoring um, where we can factor some of these polynomials using um, some of the things that we've already done. So in example number five, let's see, three X to the fourth minus 27. Okay, that's two terms, so there's a difference. Okay, X to the fourth is a perfect square, but three, oh wait, I can factor out a GCF. Both of these have a common factor of three. So let's factor out that common factor of three. I'm left with X to the fourth minus nine. Now I see what I'm left with, I have two terms, it's a difference, and it is a difference of two squares. X to the fourth is just X squared squared minus nine is just three squared. So when I do this, remember, there's my A and there's my B, this is gonna factor X squared plus three times X squared minus three and then don't forget your GCF because we did factor out a GCF. And that's my answer. This polynomial completely factored or factored completely. Let's move on to example number six. In example number six, I've got a four term polynomial. So what am I gonna do to factor this? I'm gonna factor using the grouping method. Group the first two terms and the last two terms. What's my GCF for the first two terms? X squared, what am I left with? x plus 1. In the second half of this polynomial, what can I factor out of negative x minus 1? I can factor out a negative 1. When I do that, I'm left with x plus 1 because remember the ultimate goal is to get these what's in um, the parentheses to be the same. So now let's put our GCFs together. x squared minus 1 times x plus 1. The direction said to factor completely, okay? Have we done that? We have not. We use the grouping method here, but I'm not done factoring. Do you notice anything? I notice right here in this first binomial, I have a difference of two squares. So I'm gonna factor it again using the difference of squares. I can just keep on factoring as much as possible. So x squared minus one, how is that gonna factor as a difference of squares? Well, this is just x squared minus one is a perfect square. It's one squared. So when I factor this binomial right here, it factors into x plus one times x minus one. And then I'm gonna bring down this x plus one. What's another way that you can write this? x plus one times x minus one times x plus one. I'm sure your teacher won't take off if you write it this way, but what way could you really write it? x plus one times x plus one is x plus one squared times x minus one. Let's move on to example number seven. All right, so what is example number seven gonna give us? Okay, so immediately I see two terms and I know I can factor out a GCF. That GCF is two, there are no variables in common, so when I factor out a two, y squared plus 36. Two terms, it's addition. I know I can't factor using a difference of squares. I'm done. That's that polynomial or binomial to be more specific, completely factored. Let's now move on to example number eight. In example number eight, the first thing I'm looking for is a GCF. Nope, don't have one. So now I'm just gonna factor this quadratic trinomial and I'm gonna factor it using um, the slide and divide method. Okay, so four times negative five, I'm looking for two numbers that have a product of negative 20 and a sum of negative eight. Negative 20 and negative eight. It's negative 10 and positive two. A minus 10 times A plus two, the number that I multiplied in, which is four, I'm gonna divide it out. And now I'm gonna simplify this 
dividing by 2, I get 5 over 2. This becomes 2a minus 5. So if you want to pause the video, which I probably should have said earlier, pause the video and use the method that you would use um, if it's not the slide and divide method, if it's the grouping method or the box method, and then let's see if we get the same answer. So 2 over 4 simplifies to 1 over 2, and this becomes 2a plus 1. And that concludes your notes over factoring polynomials by factoring a difference of two squares. I hope it was helpful.